Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be giving you guys a tour of my Church of Luminance castle. This is a castle that's basically Hello. been inspired by the Church of Luminance. Uh, I wanted to make two sister castles. So one of them is this one and there's another castle that I'm working on called the Church of the Damned. Um, that castle tour will also be coming in the future, but that's not what this video is about. So yeah, let's get right into it. Let's get started and I'll give you guys a tour. So if we walk through here in the very opening of the castle, this is just one of two entrances. The other entrance of this castle is all the way down here on this side of the bridge. Uh, I'll be showing you guys that as well. But uh, I decided to use these windows throughout the entire castle. I had the, the choice between those and the other ones. So there's the Wraith one and there's the Vampire one. Um, I thought the Vampire one looked kind of nicer. Like I understand that this isn't like quite making sense in the grand scheme of things. But because of the colored glass, I couldn't help myself but to use this as a common like window because I thought, well, the servants that'll be in here will be vampires anyway, so maybe they're potentially missing out on what they once had before they became servants of this castle. So maybe this is their way of coping. I don't know, but <laughs> yeah, this is uh, kind of what I was going for. I have a bunch of little bushes here. I decided to use sacred grapes a lot in uh, this design. I also put down a bunch of flowers and wrote, well, mostly just, I think I only used roses and sacred grapes throughout the entire castle. Uh, the sacred grapes, of course, you know, pretty, pretty self-explanatory and the blood roses I think are just pretty so I just added them. <laughs> uh, I used a lot of the standing lamps throughout the design as well. For the fencing I used the verdant garden fencing uh, throughout the entire design. So yeah we're just going to keep going straight through this castle. Uh, as you can see here I put a couple of statues. This came with the um, Castlevania DLC pack so I couldn't help but add angels on here. I thought it made sense uh, just visually and thematically. I added some horses here too, just for a little bit of uh, variety in the garden area. This area here is like semi indoors where like you have a roof over your head, but you still feel nature because, you know, you could feel, you know, th the wind going through the corridors and stuff like that. That was kind of like the idea here. Um, I also have this little uh, hidden nook area. I guess it's not hidden. It's more hidden away in the sense that, uh, you know, you could have a private conversation between two people here or you can just chill here if for some reason you just want to get away from everyone, uh, which can be understandable. Uh, also, you have the castle heart here, which I have hidden with this, uh, this door. This is one of the newer doors that we have. This is the battlement gate. So I used the battlement gate and then the other door is the cordial gate. The battlement and cordial gates, I believe, are just part of the base game. But um, like I said earlier, the angels in the beginning, those are uh, part of the Castlevania DLC pack. Um, I think the windows might be too, but I'd have to double check. And of course, we have the noble garden bench. This is pretty much a staple. Uh, you know, sitting for outdoors kind of thing. There's only one outdoor bench that is in the game right now. Um, as far as this goes, this one is just stone. You can't really change the type of stone that this is made out of, which is a shame. Um, there's also these nice little uh, rural garden chairs, which I like to use throughout the design because you can actually uh, dye these white. And I wanted a lot of uh, thematic stuff going on here with, you know, just uh, just a lot of bright colors and it definitely makes uh, a little bit of a difference between this castle and some of the other castles I've done before. This NP- this uh- I almost said NPC oh my god. This servant right here I have no idea where his coffin is so I don't know how he's down here because I locked away all the servants but uh, I guess he escaped my uh- he escaped my notice somehow so I guess I'll have to figure that out at some point. <laughs> um, if we go back in here, this is, of course, the entrance. Once again, we're going to go up the stairs to the left here. And there's also another staircase on the opposite side where it's basically this, the exact same thing, just kind of going up the stairs here. Um, if we go up into this little uh, area here, that's a little bit uh, 
separated in. And here's another servant for some reason. I don't know. Maybe I just missed a couple, but, um, oh, well, I guess that's besides the point. Uh, I decided to add some elements of water flowing and stuff like that, because I know in like a lot of churches and stuff, you'll have like water fountains and things like in the church and stuff like that. So I felt like just kind of adding a little bit of uh, coziness in this room while also having like some, you know, really chill leisure activities like, you know, chess, which I honestly, I really, really, really love this this new piece that we got of furniture uh, with the uh, 1.0 update. We also got, um, oh, I just noticed these uh, flower pots are not the correct color and looks like I'm going to have to go back and fix that. <laughs> oh, well, um, but yeah, I decided to do a little bit of symmetry here through these uh, things here. These are actually not windows. These are doors, um, but you can use them kind of as like larger window gate things. Um, I hope that makes sense but yeah i decided to use these doors as windows just because they have such a unique design to them and there's no current uh setup now where they have like a, a block so like for example if we look at the prison gate you have the prison entrance block and for the barrier gate we have the barrier entrance block for some reason these new um gate like doors like this one does not have anything like that so until we do uh, i'm just gonna settle with this and then of course i added some reading materials in this area just to create like a little bit of a you know like i said like a coziness little um just area to relax and read if we go actually you know what before i go in there i'm gonna actually head downstairs and we're gonna go to the other side of where the entrance was so we're gonna go from this room over here and here is uh some of the area that i was kind of looking at i have uh i decided to put the three statues here i guess i could have added like some roses and stuff i i'm not sure why i didn't here maybe there was a reason at the time uh that might have escaped my view but i'm gonna continue it's funny how like I go through the castle like a hundred times it feels like and I still find mistakes even when I'm doing my castle tour it just shows you like the sheer size of the castle um the fact that you there's no way everything could be absolutely perfect in the castle I mean it's an impossible task but doesn't mean I won't try um this building here you're probably wondering what this leads to this is actually the bell tower and when you take the teleport it leads you to the top and of course I use the doorbells as the bells I think it fits well. I love, I absolutely love this part of the castle. I'm gonna go up the bell tower later, um, but I just wanted to show you that as a preview. And uh, yeah, if we go around here, we have some gargoyles kind of chilling on these pillars. This is like, like I have very, I have very few gargoyles throughout this castle. Um, I know some churches do have gargoyles and stuff like that, like some of the older churches, but um this church is a little bit different uh so i decided not to mess around with that as you can see we have a lot of uh, church staff here we have some nuns we have uh this guy i don't even know what they what are they even called devoted there we go we have devoted <laughs> uh we have some church wine over here we have some herbs over here for um whatever purposes they need them for and uh, of course you have the paper press so that you can put out the the Sunday Bulletin, as some people would call it. Um, but yeah, I, I did use a lot of inspiration from like uh, Catholic churches and stuff. I've been to quite a few of them myself. Uh, I'm not religious currently, but in the past I did go to um, like Catholic churches and things like that. And there were always like, you know, water fountains and, you know, the glass in the windows and stuff like that. And my understanding as to why you see a lot of this uh, decorative glass on the windows is because during the earlier days of the church, um, I guess people, not everyone could read, not everyone was literate. So in order to combat this issue, they made pictures out of the windows to kind of explain, you know, the story of their religion. Um, so I always thought that was kind of interesting because, you know, if you can't, it just shows really like how universal art can really be, especially when we're talking about things like communication of ideas. Like, I feel like it's interesting how like, you know, people could look at something and be like, yeah, that means this or, oh, that is, you know, these things. But yeah, but if we go into this uh, particular church hall, this is a the smaller version of the, um, the church that I like 
um, I put this uh, basically together where here you'd have like the, I think they're called altar servers or something like that, that would sit here. And then here I could just imagine like a deacon sitting in, in this chair and a priest over here. And then here you kind of stand here and do all your things. I mean, it's very like, it's very similar to that. Um, now for the church of luminance i know that like obviously it's like a fictional church like and stuff like that but i always thought that you know it'd be interesting to kind of reimagine it as something that's a little bit more realistic um so i feel like i really kind of achieved that here if you notice we have the benches and then these i thought they looked more like pews than they did like podiums and then here you know a person could sit here and read whatever chapter out of whatever book that is, you know, very old and ancient for some reason. <laughs> uh, I forget exactly which books would be read, but that's some that's a, usually a place where like a volunteer or someone in the church would basically stand and like read a passage of some kind. Some kind. Sometimes it'd be the deacon, sometimes it'd be the priest or anything like that. So I always thought that was interesting. And then you also have, um, like I said, you have the benches and then you have the pews. Now these are podiums not pews but they looked a lot like pews and they also matched the benches so i figured there wasn't really any harm in using them as pews and i gotta tell you like in real life like getting hit with one of those pews like on your foot when it comes down is one of the most painful experiences i have ever experienced <laughs> it's i i would put it on on like the equivalent of like stepping on a lego barefoot like it, it's that painful um <laughs> But yeah, it's definitely, it's one of those things that you just kind of remember, you know, if it happens to you, you know, if you know, you know, if not, well, we're going to keep going. Uh, so here I have this nice little forward and back situation here with the two, um, the two angels. We have one facing that way, one facing this way. And of course, with the differences in light, it's definitely like during the day, it almost glows. Uh, I really like how that ended up. Uh, I also added, oh, as you can notice, I should have mentioned this earlier, I also have more of the sacred grapes growing here. Um, if we go through here, we have more sacred grapes going through here. We also have some open windows. And if I walk through here, in this area, and now I'm looking at it, I think that the two, uh, I think that the two servants were these two, and that's why they got out. <laughs> uh, oh, well. But yeah, if I look through here, I put like mirrors. I had to, I had to put the coffins somewhere. Like I, I needed a place to put the coffins. So I just made them like dorm rooms, if that makes sense. Um, you know, cause I was thinking like, you know, for monasteries, for example, like there's like dorm rooms for like nuns and, and, uh, brothers, I think they're also called. Um, and you also have like, of course, this exit entrance here where you have the nice little bridge that goes up and over and into uh, the castle. So very, very nice. Uh, I'm going to head over this way and we're going to take a little tour of this uh, garden area. So if we go through this little garden area, uh, we have the nice water fountain and we can sit there and listen. And it's just super chill and relaxing. You can sit on the, the bench and you can almost imagine someone, you know, uh, sitting here like kind of thinking about life and all that uh, within the silence of this beautiful garden. You also have uh, archways. I decided that I had the archways as kind of like a last minute decision in a way. Um, it was like toward the end of uh, me building this castle and I just felt like there just wasn't enough going on in the passageway. I felt like it was too plain. So a good way to kind of combat that was by putting arches because not only did it fit the theme thematically, but it also just looked really nice. Um, you can also change like the color of the arches and it looks like I forgot to do that, but I'm gonna leave that alone since I forgot to do that. I think it looks fine the way it is and we're just going to continue. Um, we also have another church, uh, sorry, another, uh, statue here with uh, another angel. And if we go through here, you can have, uh, you can walk through the horse, um, the horse hedges. I forget exactly what they're called. I think they're they're in the garden section. They're in garden hedges and they're called garden hedge sculptures. There you go. So these sculptures of the horses. Um, I needed something for this backdrop, but I didn't want to add like another uh, bench. So I decided to use like another like two hedges to kind of hold up this back end. Uh, but yeah, this, this is definitely something that I, I'm really happy with how it came out. Uh, if we go through here and we start going upstairs, I'm actually going to switch to my wolf form to get us there a little bit faster. Um, 
we would definitely look at some of the cooler things going on here. So if we go up here um, and we turn right instead of going into that little uh, cozy area, we have kind of an interesting setup. We have another church, but it's larger. Um, it's like another church area that's is much, much larger uh, in the sense that not only is like the table kind of like centered in a way that makes it look larger because there's more space on each side, but it has a very similar setup to the previous one that I showed you, but it's like double the size. So we have two rows of pews and chairs uh, for, you know, altar servants or anything they do. And then, of course, you have the, the deacon and priest uh, spots right there. I also lined the walls with a lot more candles to kind of brighten up the area, you know, create a little bit of a, a more um, a warm colored feel while also kind of feeling a little bit peaceful in its delivery, if that makes sense. And then, of course, we have the bench here. We have some pews. We got some nice flowers or actually not flowers. We have these uh, plants here. I decided to use these plants because they're a very neutral looking plant in the sense that they don't really have any like cool coloration or anything like that. And uh, I, I just thought it would kind of fit the carpet a little bit more. That was probably like the main reason why I did that. I also have uh, some beautiful little candles here. These candles are new. These are from if we go to decoration no sorry if we go to lighting and then we go to the verdant candle sconces uh, i believe this is this uh i think this is the middle one that i used i think the middle one is the one i used um but yeah that these candles i love them so much they're so pretty and then of course um we have all this other stuff uh i mean i could have changed the lighting of all of these things i've actually experimented a little bit with the lighting with all these lights um you know i could have made them all white and stuff like that but at the end of the day i decided to kind of leave them looking kind of more natural um i didn't want to create too much of a uh fantastical feel within these within the chambers or within like the church area if that makes sense uh this this area right here these two rooms uh someone actually called it a confessional uh i don't know if that's actually the real term for this but i remember that like you know these would be places where people would go for like reconciliation so what what that sacrament would be is basically you just um you know you go into the the room you know you sit down and you're like forgive me father i have sin and they're like then, then, of course, you have the priest over here who's like, all right, what did you do? And then you're over here telling them, hey, I murdered that guy down the street. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's basically what these are for. I thought that these rooms would uh, actually fit really well. They're usually at the back of the church, but within the same like church area. Um, they're usually accessible from the main area. So I thought, OK, well, having that as like a separate thing might be really cool. Um, and of course you have this uh, panel here to block out or anonymize the person who's confessing. Uh, so that's just like an extra element of uh, realism in that sense where, you know, that's pretty normal to see. Um, but yeah, there's that. And of course we have a way gate here. We need to have a way gate. We can't not have a way gate in the sense that, well, gotta travel here somewhere, somehow. Uh, I've noticed that as I continue to make higher and higher floors. I experienced a lot more flickering with these lights. Um, we're only on the, I believe, second floor? Hold on. Yeah, we're only on the second floor right now, but the the um, bell tower has like way more floors than that. So whenever I'm like near the bell tower, I notice that a lot of the lights will start to flicker and stuff like that, which is kind of unfortunate. I was kind of hoping that like that would you know, would have been fixed by the time uh, 1.0 came out. But the fact that I keep seeing it, I don't know if it's something in my settings or what, but uh, that yeah. is very unfortunate. I'm going to also keep going here and we're going to continue down this bridge. Now, this bridge area is very chill. I decided to keep a very um, relaxed atmosphere for the bridge. Uh, looks like I missed a gargoyle here, which I'll I'll have to add. Actually, you know what? I'll add it now, because if I don't add it now, I will forget, um, which is kind of funny when you think about it, because uh, a lot of times people will be like, well, you know, it's done. It's over. But, you know, you never know. Sometimes you find mistakes even when you're doing your castle tours and stuff like that. Uh, if I go into this room, this is another dorm room. Uh, you have a bunch of uh, 
people well actually i have some priestesses in here which is a little bit different than the other area and of course all you have to do is go down here uh this area here is kind of secluded no one can really access it so it's more of a um it's more there for like visual um variety a little bit just to kind of balance out the left and right sides um but yeah i decided to add a little bit of uh decoration here just to keep it looking nice even though no one can actually access that um if i go to the third floor i can get past all of these guys that'd be great <laughs> if i go to the third floor i also um let's see we got my coffin so my coffin's up here and i can just chill and rest or whatever and of course you also have a, a longer bridge going this way i really wanted to have a lot of bridges when it came to this design i rarely put bridges in my designs not because i don't like them but because i just haven't like felt like it was a good time to implement them but uh i think this one in particular has just been very very cool because you have the double you have the double bridge where you have the bottom bridge you have the top bridge and it just adds like extra layers of uh depth to the castle i also really like how i put together here a bunch of roses around the bottom of the horses this is what i was talking about earlier when i said i guess i could have added roses like to the other things but i think i'm pretty happy with how this castle turned out in general and of course you have another hidden area here where you and a friend can sit and chill and and play some chess in a nice relaxing environment um you, you can just imagine how uh you know relaxing being here might actually be in fact you might even uh accidentally think it's a spa or something <laughs> it feels like it's very it's very relaxing of course i have another water fountain here i have a bunch of uh these planters i've used throughout the entire castle as well as these lamps so you can see a lot of common thematic stuff going on here uh even with these chairs and tables like i use them downstairs in this garden over here in the in the corner so it's definitely something where i tried to keep the thematics uh of the castle the same everywhere so that I could have one you know feel to it so originally uh, well actually i should probably talk about the bell tower a little bit so originally the bell tower was something that i knew for sure i wanted to do like since at like i want to say the very beginning of uh putting everything together like i knew immediately that i wanted to have a bell tower you can't have a church without a bell tower you have to have some kind of bell so i wanted to make sure i implemented that in some way shape or form uh, originally it was supposed to be just one column going all the way to the top but when i realized that i couldn't uh make uh levels that didn't have a connection to the ground and couldn't really wrap it the way i wanted to i ended up just making a large structure um so here we can go up and of course i use these doors as windows again throughout this entire uh row here and you can also see how i use the fencing down here where the staircases is and you can probably hear him right now but we do have one um one servant in this uh castle and this is actually a, a recommendation or like an idea by someone in my chat while i was building it to just put the guy with the bell up here because who else would be in charge of the bell tower right um so yeah i really like how this castle turned out of course i love to to ring the bell and just run up and down and it's just going up and down the castle this is the only teleportation pad i have in the entire castle i think it makes sense just uh from a, not only a visual level but just in general and i just i don't know i'm really happy with how this castle turned out i think that there was a lot of uh decision making early on which led to a lot of the consistencies that you see in this castle i mean i can also fly up just to show you guys uh what it looks like from above so i'm just gonna do that and of course i mean this is just gorgeous you have plenty of light coming down and shining the one thing that i that drives me nuts about this that i really wish that there was a way to remove and maybe there is and i just don't know and if you know please tell me in the comments how do i get rid of the fog because before we didn't have this like uh fog when you would fly into the sky you could just see straight down into the ground and now that you know i've been decorating castles like i want my areas to look like this i don't want it to look like this where i can't really see what's going on here so i don't know how that can be resolved or if there's like a way to mod that out or something but it would be really nice to be able to view the castles without the layer of fog um especially if you're just doing stuff for decorating purposes and 
yeah i really really love how this castle turned out let me know what you guys think in the comments below um did you like the castle is there anything that you would have changed is there anything that maybe you haven't seen before that you like do you have any questions about how it was put together uh feel free to ask that in the comments below yeah i i really hope that you know you guys really found this enjoyable um what do you what kind of castles are you guys currently working on i always i always like to ask um i know that the sister castle to this castle church of the dam should be finished sometime this week so i'm hoping to uh release that maybe next week or the week after uh as soon as i can um for those of you who don't know my name is shiloh q i'm a shiloh's quaintly reaper and guide to the underworld i stream three times a week on twitch kick and youtube and you can find me playing games like v rising foundation palea and a bunch of other uh, games that are kind of more chill, relaxed, sandboxy kind of games too. Um, I love to build bases and you know build structures and things like that. So, yeah, feel free to check me out there on my social media. You can also find me on Twitter. Uh, make sure if you like the video, you like, share, and subscribe. And as always, Sholo out.